Hello and welcome to this video on why you should use CFA and not EFA. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to multivariate statistical methods including structural equation modeling, factor analysis, multi-level modeling and latent class analysis. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter, as well as courses that I offer through Quantfish. In this video, I want to address the question of why or when you should use confirmatory factor analysis rather than exploratory factor analysis or EFA. So many people are confused about when to use when to use one of these techniques. So what is the difference? EFA is really as the name says for exploring factor structure. So strictly speaking, we only need EFA when we have no idea about the factor structure that may underlie a set of variables that we have measured. So if you are faced with a data set with a bunch of variables and you have no idea from prior studies or theory or from anything about what these variables measure and you want to find out are there variables that group together that measure the same dimension are there variables that are distinct or groups of variables that are distinct from one another then exploratory factor analysis is a great tool to make sense of the covariance structure or correlation structure of these variables and helps you to group or cluster variables that measure something similar and also to filter out maybe variables that are unique in terms of what they measure and do not group with other variables so that can help you a great deal to explore a data set with unknown measurement properties. That being said, this is something that is rarely the case in practice. At least in my field, psychology, we're usually not faced with that situation where we have a data set and we have no idea what the variables are supposed to measure. Typically, we are using questionnaires that are either already established measures or tests that are already established tests where it's already clear what dimensions and how many dimensions are supposed to be measured with the tests and they've been validated, they've already gone through factor analysis and so it's already clear what factors are supposed to be measured in most situations. So at least we have an idea uh, regarding the hypothesized or theoretical factor structure. Normally we don't have the situation that there's just so see the wild west of um, variables where we don't know what these variables measure and that's the reason why you typically do not need exploratory factor analysis in most fields that deal with established scales or even with newly developed scales because even when you develop a new scale you don't do that just like that without thinking about what the dimensions are that you want to measure but you have dimensions already in mind and then you can test those factor structures with CFA. CFA is suitable to test a hypothesized factor structure that you either assume based on previous research or that you assume based on your theory of how your measures were developed and so therefore purely exploring data structures is relatively rare at least in my field psychology but also in many other fields where we use measurements questionnaire data test data typically we do have an idea already about the underlying dimension so when you don't have that and you need to find out how many factors are measured and you have no idea how many it could be then EFA may be a valuable tool for you to generate hypotheses about the factor structures but in most cases we can move on to CFA right away and test the hypothesized structures. Now what is another argument against EFA so to say when you already have data that 
you have certain hypotheses about even if they're relatively vague. EFA involves a whole bunch of complications including subjective decisions that can make it difficult for other people to replicate your findings unless you make it really, really clear how you proceeded with your analysis, which many people don't do. So in EFA, first of all, we have the decision to make about the number of factors. And that is oftentimes very subjective. There are criteria for determining the number of factors such as the so-called Kaiser criterion eigenvalues greater than one. There is a scree test which is rather subjective in many cases where you look at the distribution of the eigenvalues across factors and then you decide on the number of factors. There's parallel analysis which involves simulation which is a little bit more objective but in general Choosing the number of factors already can be quite a subjective endeavor and not every researcher will agree, so to say, as to the number of factors. And then you have to you have more um, decisions to make. Which estimation method do you use? Do you use maximum likelihood factor analysis or do you use other methods? Uh, of estimation, what type of rotation method do you use? Do you use oblique methods or orthog orthogonal methods? And then which oblique method would you use for factor rotation and so on? And also with exploratory factor analysis, you have to deal with cross loadings. So a whole bunch of loadings will be estimated that are close to zero and not meaningful. And so then you have a, uh, you have to figure out, okay, which loadings are um, meaningfully large or meaningfully different from zero, which ones should be interpreted. And so you have a big, big um, set of parameter output to deal with. In contrast, CFA in a way is really more straightforward because you set up the model typically with a simple structure where each variable loads only onto the intended factor. In some cases, you may have cross loadings that you may estimate or there may be complex factor structures with double loadings of variables such as for example bifactor models or latent state trait models or multi-trait multi-method models or something like that but in general CFA is pretty straightforward in terms of the model specification and therefore less subjective it's more it's easier to keep the specification transparent we typically use maximum likelihood estimation and then we get a test of model fit that we can use to rigorously test the model against the observed data and that is a big advantage of CFA over many EFA methods. There's also maximum likelihood EFA where you get a chi-square test of model fit as well, but other EFA methods don't have such a rigorous test for um, testing the factor model against the observed data. CFA is also more flexible when you have more complex data structures that are already mentioned. So when you have uh, structures that involve faceted data where the, the where there are multiple aspects to your data for example you have multi-trade multi-method data or multi-trade multi-rater data where your variables measure multiple factors but they also measure different rater effects then variables naturally would have loadings on multiple factors for example trade factors and method factors and that is very difficult to handle with EFA because EFA assumes there's only one main loading and the rest is basically um, junk or the, the other loadings should be small and so with rotation it is difficult to make sense of faceted data that can be modeled, for example, with bifactor type models in the CFA framework. Likewise, when you have longitudinal data and you have trade and state components of your data, meaning time-specific components and stable components, then also variables would load onto two factors, trade and state residual. And that's also something that would be very difficult to model with an EFA or when you have correlated errors for the same variables across time, so method effects or specific effects that are shared across time, then that's something that can be brilliantly well modeled with 
confirmatory factor analysis, but not with an EFA, where um, it would be very difficult to figure out a structure that actually maps onto what is in the data. So CFA is more flexible, allows you to model complex data structures where variables have loadings or are influenced by multiple factors. And so that's another argument to say that usually CFA would be preferred because it can fit structures that EFA cannot easily fit. So the take home message is that EFA may be useful, but mostly only when you don't have any idea about what's in your data. If you have a set of variables and you really have no hypotheses, no theory, no prior research that indicates what the variables measure, then an EFA can be really useful and can show you what's in the data and how variables may be grouped to clusters of variables, but in most other cases, CFA would be preferred. In most cases, we do have some amount of knowledge or theory about variable groupings and how vari what is measured by the variables in our data set, so we don't need to apply an EFA in most cases. Now, there's one more thing, and that is when a CFA really doesn't fit, and you don't know why. So let's say you did have a theory or you had expectations, you fit your CFA model, it totally doesn't fit and you, you don't know why. Why does it not fit? Then also sometimes an EFA can be helpful because it allows you then to explore the reasons for misfit and an EFA then sometimes shows you which variables really aren't um, a good fit with the model, for example, and what structure may be um, in may be represented by the other variables. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources. Leave a comment in the comment section if you like, and I'll see you next time.